Hello, Soap Peasant here, and I am in the middle of the woods, smack dab in the middle of Houston County. I'm in Crockett, Texas, and they call it the Paradise in the Pines, and I have to agree. It's wonderful. Uh, I love it up here, and I am going to be making a soap today over a live fire. This particular soap video is dedicated to a fellow YouTuber, Dave Pearson. I really love his channel. Uh, it's called Really Big Monkey One, and it's fun in the woods with Dave Pearson. And he just does a really super good job of showing all different kinds of bushcrafting things, uh, fire starting things, and I've learned so much about knives and what you can do with them, and saws, and just all kinds of things. Anyway, check out his channel if you would, because he really has a, a lot of great information that I think everybody should know. You ought to know a little bit about something, about how to get along if there's very limited things or if you only have a few things. You don't have I'd like to challenge Dave to make soap over a fire. Making the fire will not be his sticking point. <laughs> it, 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 it may be mine, but it's not going to be his. And so he'll have an easy time with that. But I'd like to challenge him because I think it would be a lot of fun to see him do that. Let's get started. And boy, it's still windy. It's been windy and just crazy windy. But I, I guess being in the middle of a pasture in the middle of the woods, it's going to be windy. So we'll see. I'll put in the description box uh, something about Dave's channel. I'll put the ingredients that I've used for this soap. You can just use the basic recipe and most of the things that are in the recipe uh, you can find in your grocery store. They're all really basic things and none of them too expensive and so this is just a really good moisturizing uh, basic soap that you can make in a large batch. I'm going to make four pounds of it. The only thing that you may have uh, an issue finding is the lye. It needs to be 100% lye, and so if you get it from a store that sells it as drain cleaner, you need to look on the ingredients and make sure that it is 100% lye. Uh, I order my lye through a supplier, and I get 100% food grade lye, and that's what I use in all of my hot processed soaps. But I understand that you can find cans of 100% lye used is sold as drain cleaner and so but just be careful and make sure you look at the ingredients so always run a recipe through soap calc that's a soap calculator and it is really terrific and it'll walk you through it it's very easy to use you can print it out so you can save it if if you like that or you think hey i, I might do this again i've got enough soap for about a year and a half but I may do it again someday. someday anyway I hope you enjoy this video it's gonna be a lot of fun and I enjoy being outdoors and and trying new things and this is something that I've never done before I've made a lot of soap but I've never done it over an open flame so here's the soap apocalypse wow I'm going to have to yell because it is very gusty out here today. I'm fighting pretty much every element that you can imagine, it seems like, trying to do this out in the woods. <laughs> First, uh, we'll go through the fire starting part of it, which is pretty important. Got to heat up those oils, so we'll see you back in a second. Okay, I've got my hole dug right here. Kind of cleared out a little bit of the leaves and vegetation from around it. And I don't need a big fire for this because it's not going to take a tremendous amount of heat 
to melt the oils. But I dug it kind of deep because I'm going to keep the fire low because it's so gusty. I'm going to put a grate from an old barbecue pit over the top of it. So what I did was I dug it out and just kind of banked it up around the sides. And I'm going to do a little bit more clearing. I'll show you the fire building uh, before I put the grate on and we'll get it fired up and started. I'm going to have several different sizes of of wood to go in here and, and tender to start it. And so a lot of people would think to use large pieces of wood first and try to start it that way. And I used to think so also. But I learned that you kind of build it from small to bigger. And so you start with small pieces. You, you try to get it going. And then once it's going, then you add more small pieces and that gets it, gets it, you know, actually caught. And then you just continue to add larger and larger pieces as you need your fire to be whatever size. And, so, and for the larger pieces, I'm going to use a, a silky saw and cut that. And it works really great. I love it. It's not mine. <laughs> it's my son's. But I love it. And I use it a lot. It's very easy to use. I'm going to be doing a little bit of shaving to get some tinder going with this Schrade knife. Now it's not as sharp as you would think it is. It's really not. It'll shave down some uh, tinder for you so to help get you started. So let me uh, get that set up and I'll show you exactly what I mean and how you can do it too. Okay, I wanted to try to get you a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to have several different sizes. Here's, here's what my little ones look like. And these are going to help me get it started once I get the spark. And I'm going to use a magnesium um, barrel rod to, to get it started. If you go and dump something like this right on top of all your little sticks that you get it started it smothers it right out okay I'm gonna start putting things in the oh give me a bit okay I'm gonna start putting things in and building it with the small sticks and just little little pieces little wispy pieces and I'm gonna use this striker it's a uh, nano striker XL you kind of have to get down past the black coating that's on there I can do this. <laughs> I can. I have. I added a little bit of uh, moss from the from the pieces of wood I had, and I'm putting a few more little sticks in here, the really tiny ones, the little guys. And my arms are about to fall off, to be honest with you. This is the oops. This is the first time I've used this particular striker, but there's no excuses. I need fire. I know I make it look easy. <laughs> but it isn't. It isn't. It's normally not this hard, but you know how it is when you got the camera rolling. Okay, what I did is I pulled some Velcro uh, lint <laughs> from my son's pants leg 
and we'll see if I can get the lint that I pulled out of the Velcro. I'm trying not to use anything except what's already out here. And my son's pants leg is out here, so let's see. Let's see if that doesn't give me the help I need. I am tenacious. you got to give me that. You wouldn't believe me if I told you how many times I had done this before. The solo stove for campfires. be a whole video about strikers. You know, I didn't want to cheat by using a piece of dryer lint, but I am. Okay, my son's going to take a turn helping me because I've already spent, I don't know how much time, probably more than half an hour. I'll be dogged if you get it. <laughs> I'm gonna get oh it looks like it looks Okay, I gotta show you this beautiful dog. Look at this beautiful dog that is just giving us moral support. She just came over just to see, just to see what we were doing and how it was going. And could she possibly be of any assistance? Ha <laughs> ha, I wish. We're going to take a little break for a public service announcement and then we'll be back.
This is very pathetic to admit. But after hours of trying to get this started, I just couldn't do it. And this is the first time, but that figures, doesn't it? I'm sure everybody knows what I mean when I say that. So I'm going to use a barbecue lighter because my arms are about to fall off and that's pretty much all I can manage to work at this point. Oh, oh. You'd think this stuff was wet, the way I'm having so much trouble getting it started, but it wasn't. I collected it before we had any rain, which it did rain, but this was all kept nice and dry. So many problems getting this started, even with a barbecue lighter. If I'd have had that pot sitting in the sun as long as I've been working on this, it would have melted by now. You know, this has not been my day, it's not been my week or month or year. I'm sure a lot of people feel that way, and I definitely do. I just, it's just been such a strange, such a strange year, hadn't it? But at least I'm well enough to be out here failing at something that I've done so many times. I am grateful for that. I really am. Because I know that there's a lot of people, maybe some people watching, that that's not the situation they're in. You know, they're, they're sick or they're caring for somebody that's sick, running errands for people that, you know, can't do it, or they're out of work. And so my complaints are small ones. Some of them, some of them are pretty bad, but. You know, this stuff's just not gonna catch. It's just not gonna do it. It's not gonna do it. <sighs> All right, in goes my paper towel. Man, I'll tell you, even my paper towel doesn't want to burn. And it wasn't damp or anything like that. And the kicker is I'm probably sitting in a patch of poison ivy or something. That would top it off. That would just, that would cap the globe, as they say. All right. <sighs> I've concluded that the problem could be that the hole, because it did rain, early in the morning and it's very sandy soil it could be that my my hole was sort of like a humidifier and therefore when I put the dry stuff in and was trying to spark it I was kind of doing it in a very humid situation so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take aluminum foil and I'm gonna line the hole I don't give up easy. <laughs> you gotta give me that. I shouldn't have said I don't like this striker thing because if the problem was the humidity in the hole, then it's not really the striker's fault. It's more operator error. 
and I'm used to that, so. Anybody ever used an entire ferro rod? <laughs> ah. I never gamble. The reason why I never gamble is because I always think, I always think I'm, I'm fixing to get it, you know? And so, my tenacity is better used in different places, I think. Because I would be convinced, I'd be one of those people that would go, Oh, just one more, just one more hand, just one more pull of the thingy because I can get it. I, I'm going to win the jackpot. <laughs> Oh, I always think I'm going to be able to make something work. All right, well, I scorched it. <laughs> I scorched it good. But I have been working on this for many hours now. And so, as much as I hate to say it, cheating like a big dog. If, I, if, if this has any gusto in it, which it doesn't look like it does. Ah, there we go. Look how easy that is. Yay! I bet I've impressed Dave. I bet really big monkey is thinking, well, that's just about the uh, most pitiful attempt <laughs> I've ever seen. And he would be so right. I would have to heartily agree. So, so much for my bushcrafting skills. I can't even get it going with a lighter. That's pretty bad. I bet you I couldn't burn a barn down full of dry hay. Looks like I scared a bug. I am going to... I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try these bark shreds. See if I can get them to catch. Surely this... Sorry. This stuff's got to catch. Hi, yay, yay, yay. And yes, I'm back at the striker. <laughs> because I want to do this right. I want to do this right. I don't want to cheat. Come on. Come on. I'm not kidding. I have spent hours. I don't know how many hours. I think it might be June already, but I <laughs> I have spent hours scratching at this thing and trying different ways to get it to catch. I guess this is a lesson in I don't know what. I haven't learned my lesson yet. <laughs> Clearly, because I'm still goofing with this. <laughs> I'm still thinking I can get it. I can get it. Okay. I'll use a lighter. I still can do it. I can do it. Oh. It's... See, this stuff is so dry. That's what I'm just mystified about is it is so dry and yet 
you know? It just doesn't want to start. That's kind of big. Boy. Well, I'm dirty. My hands are sore from striking. Shoot. All right. It's come down to this. Yes. Yes, it is that time when I resort to just throwing matches in because apparently the element of fire has left the earth. Some outdoorsman and bushcrafter I am, huh? Just say it. Just say it, everybody. Just say it. Ugh. This, is, this fire is so hot that a bee is willing to uh, fly right into it. So, if that gives you any indication. I've been blowing on this full thing so long. There's going to be a chalk outline of me. Well, it's a good thing my life doesn't depend on this. Just my reputation. Ah, I've got a smolder, and that's it. Come on, please. Oh, oh, oh please, come on. Oh, it's not even catching the match heads that are in here. Oh, I didn't want to have to resort to this, but here goes. The torch. Oh, all right. I tried it every other way. I tried dryer lint. Well, first I tried with just sticks and dry stuff and starting out with the small stuff. Then I added dryer lint. Dryer lint. And a ferro rod, which is whittled down. Whittled down to a nice, thin, unusable size. Then I used all the fuel in the barbecue lighter. Then I threw about a hundred matches on it. Now, that's it. It's torch time. Good grief. Oh, God, come on. <laughs> Ah, please give me a break. This is ridiculous. Why is this not burning? Why, why, why? Why? Well, I'm burning myself. Does that count? Look at this. Look at this. Okay, what I'm going to try now is some dry cedar and some fresh cedar because it burns very quickly, but it burns hot. And so I'm going to poke a little bit of this in there and hope, oh, kick some dirt in there, and hope that it catches. And yes, I'm going to use the torch.
It's like I'm striking these into a bathtub of water. <sighs> There's only one last thing I haven't tried. And I was trying to avoid it at all costs. But it looks like I'm going to have to just cheat. Cheat in the biggest way that you possibly can cheat. Heat. It's ridiculous that it took that much. And I still don't know if that'll do it. But I don't need a very high temperature for what I'm going to do. That's for sure. I just needed a little fire. <sighs> Alright, I'm going to let that burn down. And then I'm going to put the oils on it. I've got... Well, I'll give you the list later. And I am going to be making a soap today over a live fire. And... Um, 